All right, my my tech mixers, we're back with another reaction video. If I look disheveled, it's because I am. That's right. I've been out of commission for a while with the big sick. That's right, the big one, the big uh, the big one nine. It got me, the whole family, and some of my neighbors and friends. But we're all good now. Nobody died. In my naivete, I thought, hey, I'm gonna be sick for a while. I can just spend all my time making YouTube videos. But I didn't do that. I slept for a week. And now we gotta get back into the swing of things. And uh, Amazon has uh, graced our presence with another a teaser for the the rings of power it i i'm a bit confused cuz i thought that the last one that we got was a was a teaser but this is this is the main teaser i don't know what that means and why we don't just have trailers anymore they had a teaser for this teaser on their website and i just i just stop. Just call them trailers. No one even knows what a teaser is. I think the best explanation I've heard is that teasers don't give story beats. And trailers do. But good trailers also don't give away the story. So, like, just... I don't know why you gotta make it so complicated. Anyway, we're gonna watch The Rings of Power. The Lord of the Rings of of Prime. Uh, main teaser. And, uh... Uh, try not to throw up in our mouths. Oh, he's technically Mexican and three-fourths American, but for three generations he's got that nationality. Great-great-grandpa headed south, whose kids had kids then turned around. It's not what the show's about, but it's why he's Mexican technically. He most things raised in New Mexico, lived in Guadalajara for two years, speaks fluent Spanish with a bachelor's degree in language and makes a new taquito. Oh, full disclosure, I am not excited for this at all. Amazon's marketing for this show has been disgusting and completely insulting to Tolkien fans. This ain't your daddy's Middle Earth. Well, that's the Middle Earth we fell in love with. So, maybe don't advertise that. But here we go. We're going to give it a look-see. So without further ado, let's hit the play button and uh, subject ourselves to this. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, 
So right off the bat, it looks a lot cleaner than the first trailer, special effects wise. Um, there were a lot of shots in that first trailer that that looked awful. This looks a little better. Like that that looks pretty good. There there's something about it though. I don't know what it is, but it still doesn't quite look like Lord of the Rings to me. Like at least at least, you know, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, right? Which obviously, you know, different directorial styles are going to have different looks. But I think it's going to be a pretty big barrier to overcome just because Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings are just so iconic and so ingrained in people's minds that it, it's it, you're going to get like the the uncanny valley with this show because everything's going to be compared to those absolutely perfect movies. So even if it looks good, which I mean, this shot does look good. The stuff in the background, not so much. That's not terrible. But you're, I still get the uncanny valley of this doesn't look this this just doesn't feel the same as as peter jackson and i think that's going to be a huge hurdle for the show to overcome and if they were smart they should have tried to make it look more like peter jackson stuff i i think that would get a lot of people on their side i mean this shot's not terrible either these the, the shots don't look bad which is a huge step up from the first teaser which looked horrible See, I assume this is Rivendell, but it doesn't It doesn't look like the Rivendell everyone knows. I just assume it is because there's waterfalls. Like, you should have modeled it after Petey's Rivendell, and then people would have been quicker to get on board. Uh, yeah, I guess that's why they call it a teaser, because they don't give you really any of the story beats. Okay, so these are the the... The not hobbits, because they can't legally use the word hobbit, and also because they didn't exist during this time period. Why wouldn't you go with the established lore? <sighs> the Fellowship of the Ring literally opens with an excerpt from an in-world textbook on hobbits and how they became hobbits. It's the first chapter of the book, and just that contradicts what they're doing here with the harfoots with har harfoots is that what they're going for why do they look so stupid i don't i don't get this look at all why do they have stuff in their hair it just makes them look dumb and i have a strong feeling that these are going to be like the main characters of the show aside from warrior galadriel which already has his problems and they're just going to be extremely uninteresting so the, there's a comet, right? I'm pretty sure I heard that's supposed to be one of the Maiar. I don't think they have the rights to Gandalf. So it's probably just going to be a made-up character like most of these people. Everything's just so shiny. Wait, that she's that's an elf too, isn't it? Why do the elves have short hair? I don't... That's an elf. Oh, gosh. They all had long blonde hair. Why are you doing this to Tolkien? She was never a warrior, guys. She's a princess. She's a queen. She didn't do any of this crap. That shot looks kind of cool. Was it underwater? Underwater. See, like this shot. It's the Uncanny Valley. This shot just screams fake. I think it's because they're trying to go for, like, this perfect, like, elven vessel, right? But even... Elven ships get barnacles, right? Like, you can tell that this is not in the environment it's interacting with. And even these, some of these buildings, they're, they're just, like, pristine. It looks fake. The background looks good. Something about this statue looks really fake, though. And again, it's, like, it's really nitpicky on the graphics, because it's, because it's falling in that uncanny valley. Like, like, yeah, it, pretty good but there's just like something off you know if you know what the uncanny valley is it's you know the the realism curve uh, is if you go for a stylistic it can look not real and it's okay but as you get closer to realism there's a huge dip called the uncanny valley where if you're not perfect the human brain 
senses something wrong. As as you approach perfection, it actually gets worse until you get over the uncanny valley. And there's something about these. I think it's the lighting. Like it doesn't. It just these look like two different shots pasted together. Honestly, the background looks pretty good. The ships in the water, like that's that's pretty impressive CGI. That's not a bad shot. That's some good framing. That's some good lighting. But he, why does he look stupid? What is it about their elves? It's his wrinkles, isn't it? He doesn't look like an elf because he looks old. I, I think that's my biggest visual gripe is most of the elves don't look like elves. Half of them have short hair, and they just they just don't look like perfect, pristine elf elf people. Very shiny. Everything, yeah, like, uh, even though, yeah, a lot of these shots, some of them, it, it's like 50-50. Some of the costumes look good, and then some of the other ones look like they've never been used. See, oh man, why is he an elf? Um, like, this shot right here, too, you can tell that this has been intentionally frayed. But it's still like pr- like pristine cleanliness. Like this shirt has never been worn, and and it and it's we- it's weird because contrast it with the, the guy's skin, which is covered in dirt, and then right next to it is his shirt that's clearly been laundered. It's it's weird. Like these, the arm, the horse armor doesn't look like it's ever seen combat. These sailors. <laughs> There's a little bit of mud right here, right? But you can tell that's been painted on because there's still like creases you see in these guys' shirts on a on a boat. Oh, this isn't even an elvish boat. These are humans. And this boat looked like it's looks like it's never seen the sea. The why do the sails look so fake? It's weird. It's weird because visually half of these shots look good and then the other half of them don't. And I don't know what's going on with my brain. See, see the, that, these clothes look like they've been used. They're just on freaky people that look freaky for no reason. Visually, it's a bit of a step up from the first teaser. It still looks like there are a lot of problems, not just with the CGI, but with the costuming it 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 just screams a lot of it screams low effort which is weird because the other 50% of the shots scream like holy crap they worked really hard on this and that has nothing to say about the story which we already know is an abomination half of these characters weren't alive at the same time and the just the this looks like an interesting fantasy story. It, it it looks like there's potential here for for a cool fantasy show. It's just not Tolkien. So why would you shoot yourselves in the foot? I I I assume you want to slap Tolkien's name on there to automatically win the fan base, right? This happens in Hollywood all the time where they start writing a story independently and then realize it will make more money if they slap a franchise name on it, like the the Cloverfield movies. The first Cloverfield got famous and made a lot of money, and then 10 Cloverfield Lane and the Cloverfield Paradox were just sci-fi movies and during the production they decided hey let's make it a cloverfield uh, universe or or something and and you can tell because it like has nothing to do with the first movie except maybe like one tie-in scene at the very end um so so hollywood does this right like they they want to tell the story and then they realize it'll make more money if they slap slap a big name onto it so you'd assume that that's what they're doing here because Amazon doesn't have the rights to any of Tolkien's like real work. They have the rights to the appendices in The Return of the King. And all of this is based on that. And I don't know the specific details of the rights they have, but it's this is the reason why they can't use hobbits and Gandalf, right? Um so it it feels Like it should be a cash grab. Hey, I have a fantasy story I want to tell. And guess what? 
we get to slap the name Lord of the Rings on it and make extra money. But their marketing for this show has, for some reason, has been to continually antagonize Tolkien fans. They have gone out of their way to insult hardcore Tolkien fans by making changes and and writing articles that say, this is not your daddy's Lord of the Rings. So... It doesn't make sense to me. If they wanted to make money from these Tolkien fans, they should pander to them. But they're doing the opposite of that, which just begs the question, why even call this Lord of the Rings then? Why do you want the Tolkien name slapped on this property if you don't want the Tolkien fans? They're two competing ideas, and I I don't understand how those two ideas can exist simultaneously unless the only explanation that makes sense is that they don't like Tolkien fans. The only way that you could explain both of these realities coexisting is if it's intentional and they are trying to destroy Tolkien's work. Nothing else makes sense. I don't get it. I mean, seeing this trailer, it looks like they're could be a good fantasy story in there somewhere. It's just not a Tolkien story. If I saw that trailer, teaser, and it didn't have Lord of the Rings plastered all over it, I would be interested. It looks pretty good, but it doesn't look like Tolkien. And uh, that's really confusing to me. So I'm going to force my friends to watch this, and we will be covering it. On my weekly live stream, Best Gen. And uh, we'll see if it if it's actually okay. Or if it's going to end up being the dumpster fire that most people expect it's going to be. So, um, I guess, I guess we'll see, Amazon. You, you're, you're very confusing to me. Bye! Bye! <laughs>